What is up, Brandon Silvera, Mike Marazzo, episode 30, 30. I wish I was 30 again, but we've been off for a couple weeks. We're back for maybe a week and then <laughs> off a week. And because we'll be taking time. Because, you know, it's a holiday season. This yeah. will be our Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving episode. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'll be at work. Because, you know, I'll, I'm a fucking police off. officer, and I work I'll Thanksgiving. You're a Saturday. dick. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're automatically off on Thursdays. So you'll be off on Thanksgiving. It is my favorite holiday of all time, and I hate well, fucking you working your, it. You got the three Fs. Food, family, football. I'll have food. My family will be the guys I work with, and we'll be watching fucking football on television. And going to domestics all night. <laughs> well, hopefully not. Yeah, come on. You know as well as I do. Shh. Don't wake him. Don't Midnight. let him. nights. Don't give him any fucking on ideas. On any holiday where family is together, is they're drinking all day long, and somebody's going to say something. Someone's going to tell you how they really feel, and it's going to start I a fight. Know. And then somebody's going to have the bright idea to call the police. You know, and hopefully it'll be after the Cowboy game. You know, I don't go in till 7 at night. Well, I get there at 6, but we start at 7. So hopefully, you know, I won't miss too much football. Uh, God, I hate working Thanksgiving. It, when I started dating my wife back in 1985, I, I went to the first Thanksgiving. We started dating like November 16th. It was our first night, first date in in 1985. So then I went to Thanksgiving at her grandma's house. She's got, uh, her dad is Mexican and her mom is Swedish or was Swedish. So after like a week and a half, you were at Thanksgiving? If I remember right. Now remember, this is a long time ago. That's true. It's like 36. So it might have been the following year, probably the following year. But it was so cool because grandma and grandpa Lopez. They do all the traditional Mexican food, right? So you'd have grandma would be making homemade tamales and oh. sopa and tostadas and all that, right? Me homemade Mexican rice, all that oh. stuff. And then Aunt Kathy, which is my father-in-law's sister-in-law. She's Swedish Italian. Meatballs? Oh. I know, just all this. Just, just, Italian just good meatballs. <laughs> yeah. And then my mother-in-law is Swedish, so she had her food there. Oh, my God, dude. We, and we would have... You know, huge table. You get there early, of course, and all the women are cooking. Grandpa's down in the basement. Grandpa had, at the time, three, you know, at the time, there's this tube television. So he had three televisions going. He had the fucking Waltons on one television. <laughs> Always. He had a John Wayne movie on the other fucking television. And then he had the football game on. And then he had a pool table down there. And we would play pool and watch the Waltons football and John Wayne all at the same time. The beer fridge down there, and then we'd go up for dinner, and I love the canned cranberries, which is just sugar in a can. <laughs> so, Super they, traditional. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> myself, my mother-in-law, and my Uncle George would start, we would all wrestle over the canned cranberries. So finally, each of us got our own can, our little, <laughs> little side plate of cranberries. Everyone's just and, sitting there, just eating it out of the little Oh, my God. Can. So after dinner... This was the first time I'm there and I'm learning just meet, you know, learning how things go and watching everybody. And and Kim kept telling me, you know, after dinner, all the guys clean up. And I'm like, that's funny because the Cowboys are on. <laughs> and she's like, I'm not, I'm not kidding. After dinner, the guys clean up because the women cook everything. I'm like, oh, well, okay. I, so I'm sure. not kidding either. The Cowboys are on. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, dinner's over. And my, my father-in-law gets up, obviously not my father at the time, and he says uh, to my brother-in-laws and stuff, come on, let's get going. And I, my brother-in-law, Johnny, looks at me and goes, you know, waves me on. I'm like, all right. So, the, they, But the cowboys are on. Yeah, they, they had this whole system where we clean the table off, all the, we bring all the food in, all the food goes on the table. And then Grandma Lopez used to keep these cups like we – like. The paint cups that Home Depot sells. Yeah. But they used to have this Menudo was a brand of um, Mexican cheese. that So she'd keep all these containers with the lids. 
in a cabinet, like stacks of them. So one of the guys would go get all the containers. One guy would go get uh, a roll of uh, masking tape, the yellow masking tape with a marker. And then Uncle George would wheel the dishwasher because it was a portable dishwasher over to the sink. And then my father-in-law would get, he'd get the plate, scrape off the food, give the plate to Uncle George who would rinse it off, put it in the dishwasher. All the guys would then package all the food. Then we're labeling all the food. We had groups of food everywhere set up for everyone to go home with. Then we'd bag it and then we'd put the pies out. And then we'd actually get to sit down and have dessert. But Grandpa immediately went back downstairs to watch football, John Wayne and, and John Boy. He didn't do any of the cleaning up stuff. And I remember my brother, Mark, he started dating Kim's cousin, Stacy, at one point. And he goes, hey, I'm coming to Thanksgiving with you guys. And I'm like, oh, good, because I'll have help cleaning up afterwards. He's like, what? And then we get there. <laughs> but the cowboys dinner. are on. <laughs> it's time to clean up. He goes, huh? I go, yeah, all the guys do all the cleanup. That the girls did all the cooking, so now they get to rest. And that. I missed that whole, we did that for years until grandma passed and then grandpa finally passed. And now it's not the same, but I still love Thanksgiving. It's still my favorite, favorite holiday. And it sucks to have to work. So. Yeah. I usually like, I, I'm pretty torn. Like I, I, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays, but I, I'm a big fan of the Christmas season. It just seems like... <laughs> This is inevitably, like, this is the first time in a while I've actually had Thanksgiving off. So we try to plan around of, like, when we're going to see family and stuff. And I've worked midnights so the last three straight years and then six out of the last eight. So it's like, hey, I would like to actually see you guys for a little bit on the actual day so I'm not sitting there all sad watching freaking football eating a Hot Pocket. Right. Because I ain't got anywhere Hot else pockets. to go. Yeah. And it's like, well, I want to go see my family. And it always turns it, it always turns into a thing that gets figured out. Right. But there's there's a good like day or so where everyone's just like just like just mother effing each other. <laughs> yeah. It got so I don't know how it is with you, but because of our schedule, you know, I've missed umpteen, you know, Thanksgivings. What we end up doing when my mom was alive, I would miss Thanksgiving with our with my wife and our family. And then we would do a Thanksgiving with my mom. Like on Saturday, then we do another Thanksgiving. I mean, we were doing like three or four Thanksgivings because I couldn't go to fucking Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's that, that's pretty much how we've worked it out. Is we alternate years where we celebrate celebrate it on the day with the family. So like this year, it's my family's turn, and it works out because I'm off. Right. But then, like they're gonna, my wife and kids are gonna go celebrate Thanksgiving on Tuesday with my in laws when I gotta work. Oh, uh, right. So. I don't think I've actually celebrated Thanksgiving with my in-laws on Thanksgiving see, on just period. <laughs> like in, in the 10 years that we've been married, I think I've only celebrated it with them like twice. Wow. Cause we've either, cause we've either been in North Dakota. Right. Or I've been working. Yeah. And it I just told, hasn't worked out. So I told Kim I, today, just today, I'm like, this is the last fucking Thanksgiving. I will miss no more. I'm excited about that. So, and I asked her, what are you doing? She's like, well, I'm having Until you her dad coming over gig. and her brothers. <laughs> well, I usually work the um, Black Friday secure overnight at Best Buy security gig. That sounds horrible. Well, I have dinner with the family if I'm off, I happen to be off on Thanksgiving. But but still. Like and then Black, I go to Best Buy Black, Fr Black Friday. And then I stare at a 70-inch television I want. <laughs> That's on sale. I'm like, should I just come home with this? Like, you can pay. Like, we have some some like secondary jobs that like they pay like 70 bucks an hour. Yeah. No, you won't do it. No. Yeah. Black Friday at Best Buy. No. Oh, yeah. Good time. I'm shooting somebody. And, you know, it's great. It's not my jurisdiction. And I'm not, I could beat the crap out of somebody and not have to do any paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> Just hand them over to the local cops. Here you go. Uh, Best Buy security guard. Giving you the, giving you the shithead. All right. So, uh, I, how was your week? Uh, well, it was I see you don't have your cast on your it's, finger or whatever. It was my the last week was. on on modified. I uh, Woo! saw my orthopedist, and then the following day had my very first visit with the workers' comp doctor, because that's the epitome of efficient. So, this this doctor, and I don't know if it was because I was tired, because it was like 
one thirty in the afternoon that I had to be there, and it's an hour drive for me. Ugh. Who set yeah. that time up? That's on you. It was the only time they had. Mm. And I don't know. Yeah. I trust me, I'm not happy about any of this. So, anyways, I get there. The doctor walks in, and I've already filled out the paperwork, and you know, you gotta write, you know, what your injury is, brief little synopsis of how it happened. Do all that. Actually decent handwriting for once. So I'm sitting there for 20, 30 minutes before the doctor walks in. So I'm already slightly irritated. She yeah. goes, oh, so you, uh, first words, not, hey, how are you? Or I'm Dr. So-and-so. How are you? What's your name? Just, so you sprained your finger? Um, <laughs> I, it, I broke it. Like it says right yeah. there on the little and form. you're not reading the chart. There. She goes, okay, and you're a, uh, a security officer? What? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a police officer. And then she says something to the effect of, like, what's the difference? Or, no or like, same way. difference There's or something no, like that? No way. Like, what? No like, fucking Is there a difference? Yeah, I swear, dude. I lost it. I was like, there's a fairly fucking big one. Wow. And now to the point, like, I try to be pleasant most times because I understand that if I am pleasant, they are happier. Things go faster. <laughs> She's pissed me off within the first 30 seconds to where I'm like, nope, I'm going to be a dick. Yeah. So whole well, rest of the time. That. Yeah. Whole rest of the time. I'm just. She's off to the side here. Let's tell me what happened. So I broke my finger. I went to see my doctor. They sent me to an orthopedist. Orthopedist splinted it for six to eight weeks. Took the splint off a week ago. And as you can see, I'm okay. So, well, I'm going to, I'll give you a note, put you on modified, and uh, I'll follow up with you in two weeks. I go, no. I already have a note from my doctor saying that I can go back to work on the 21st, and I'm going to do that because that's what the doctor who treated this said. And she, okay, yeah, well, I'll I'll just give you a, a note what releasing a you useless... on, oh my God. I, what it the was, fuck? It was a waste of my time, her time, and it, everybody involved everyone's time and it, i could i could understand if like my primary care doctor was through like uh sutter anthem blue cross you know insert other <laughs> health insurance coverage here yeah but it's through kaiser i have kaiser like you, you guys have access to the same fucking systems like just click right. it look at it you can yeah, see the plethora of x-rays. all that before you're even in the fucking door. Yeah. So that irritated me. But I get to go back to work on Sunday, and I got to do uh, 10 hours of overtime doing my continual police training. Where oh, in how in-house training? Yeah. So at the, uh, at the, the second half of the day was, um, the topic was shooting at moving vehicles and why that's a bad idea. So we spent <laughs> two hours okay. where... Um, one of my old FTOs was talking about why shooting at a moving vehicle is a bad idea. And then we spent an hour watching videos of officers shooting at vehicles and why it's a bad idea. Which, by the way, like, do they teach y'all, like, uh, like specifically Chicago PD? I know you're not Chicago PD. But do they teach Chicago PD, like, just shoot at cars? Like, just, just do it. <laughs> But because I did go I to their swear, academy. I swear to God. All the videos like, were from CPD. All the videos were from either <laughs> Chicago PD or LAPD. It Maybe was we like, should have Romero on from Blue Lives Matter Chicago I and guess, he can answer man, that question. Like, I, I don't know. But anyways, we spent an hour watching videos of people shooting at vehicles and it not going well. And then we finish it up with, hey, let's go outside and fire some blanks at moving vehicles. I'm like, <laughs> You don't shoot at vehicles. You but spent three hours telling us why that's a bad idea, and if we do, let's we're go gonna do probably, it. We're going to probably get disciplined. I know what my excuse is when I do it. He I was told me to do it. I was trained to do it by you yep. and you. Yeah. In well, fact, one of you said, wow, you actually got one off through the windshield. <laughs> I've shot out of vehicles in training with simunitions. And so have I. I, we don't. This train is the first time where I ever at like, vehicles drew down and shot at the moving vehicle. <laughs> Just seems Actually, like a for, bad idea. For West Staff, which was our homicide team, mm -hmm. we, we had a training where we had guys with the simunitions rifle shoot at a car speeding through our 
uh, we had this whole blank field. So we shot up a car with some munitions uh, while it was racing past us. And then we tried to, then they parked it and we shot live ammunition at it. Because it was just like a, some car that they took from a drug dealer that was a piece yeah, of shit. why not? So then See we shot the a bunch of live ammo at it. And then we were able to do trajectory and uh, use the rods and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was fun. That and then uh, I have my new FTO team. Dun, dun, dun. In two hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, okay. hold on. Breaking, Breaking news. news. So in two weeks, I am leaving Midnight's. You're a dick. <laughs> I'll be going to swing shift. I would, I would like to say, so you're going to be a swinger. I would I'll like to say yep. congratulations, but it won't be heartfelt. No. Nah. Because you're, you're leaving us Midnighters. But congratulations okay, it's anyway. It's the busiest shift. You're leaving us Midnighters, but I am gaining... An FTO brother. Yeah, see? You there can you go. join us, FTOs. My buddy oh. is pissed. <laughs> From your Cause team? Because he's, no, he's a, he's a midnight FTO. Okay. Oh, he does like, he oh, want to go to swing shift? No, he wants me to go to his team. I was his like, team, yeah. I'm like, I mean, I would, but I'm tired of feeling like crap all the time, man. Yeah, hello. Like, work from three to one? Like, that's, that's the dream. It's an, it's an easy decision for you. Yeah, and I get full weekends off Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow, I get to go you back just to fell in some land. shit, didn't you? Yeah, good for you, man. So I'm happy for you. That'll be fun. Everyone's excited about that around here because then on my three days off, I won't be a zombie on day one. <laughs> no, you won't. You can get up oh. at eight o'clock in the morning. With yeah, like which six I have to do sleep. tomorrow because I have a dentist appointment. Oh yeah, I forgot today. Tomorrow's work, back to work for me. Fucking weekend. God damn it. Have I told you I hate working weekends? <laughs> you mentioned it a time or two. So, Mike, yeah. what? you're now back to full duty. This was like, what, your first full week back? Yeah. Well, it was. I was back a week, and then I was off a week because I was on vacation because my uncle came into town. Yeah. So, anything um, interesting happening? I happened? just remembered that I'm going to be working fucking Black Wednesday. Or whatever the fucking that bar night is. God damn it. The, oh, is it the day before Thanksgiving? Yeah, that when Wednesday all the, night. I only work when all the dum dums come back week. to town. Yeah, yeah, only two days of work next week, and it's fucking that Wednesday and Thursday night Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's my Friday. Oh, anyways, all kinds of shits going on. No one waited. I, or actually, I should say it seemed like they waited for me to get back to work. <laughs> it's for shit to happen, but. Just to touch on a few things, um, let's see. We had a drive-by shooting. Fun. So I hate bars. Have I ever told you that? No, but it makes sense. All right. So way before we have, we've got like four troubled bars in our town. That's it. Four out of them. No, no, just four of them are trouble. Yeah, most, that, of, that most are trouble. Yeah, about, that's it. Well, don't mind you. My <laughs> town's like a fraction of the size of your city. That's true. It's about the, probably about the size of the area that I work. Of one of your beats, <laughs> yeah. So we've got these four bars that we know they're selling. There's people selling drugs out of, but you know we've our our tech team's been disbanded. We don't have manpower, and uh, I remember right before COVID hit in February of 2020, we were at one of these bars. It's on a main street, and we go there all the time. And we, so we get a call there for a fight. Some drunk for, fuck loser. For calls, not, not to Right, no, we don't go to there to drink. drink. <laughs> yeah. So we go there for some bullshit fight, and there's some piece of shit laying on the ground, and the owner's out there, you know. I'm standing over this guy on the ground, and uh, I look over at the owner, and I said, oh, boy, I'm really going to miss when they fucking close you guys down on Saturday. Because they were closing everything in the state, you know. Yeah. And he's like, what? Why are you being that way? And I go, I fucking hate bars. There should be no bars. No bars. So it's that bar, and apparently last week, it'll be two weeks from tomorrow, a Friday night, uh, they let love some, like, gang clientele in there a lot. We know he's selling fucking drugs out of the back. Can't do anything about it. Well, we don't have the manpower to. Um, so we get calls of shots fired at the bar, and we all start rolling over there, and my boss... He happened right before the call came out. He's heading eastbound towards the city. 
on this one main street, and some guy goes flying past him at like 100 miles an hour in a car. So he's like, holy fuck. So he spins around, starts chasing this guy, or following him, trying to pull him over. Yeah, he's and, trying to keep up. He's trying to catch up to him so that he can affect the traffic right. stop. And as, For speed. as he's like chasing this guy through town, uh, then the call comes out for shots fired. Not chasing, he's, following. Right. And he's like, well, this <laughs> car has to be involved because they're fucking driving like they just shot somebody. Was that? Did that car come from the area that the bar is in? Oh, yeah. It hmm. came right from the direct area. Good enough for me. He ends up chasing the car through like one, two, three, to the fourth jurisdiction over Good for him. Yeah. And he never got really close to it because he just couldn't catch up to these, these guys. And they went on a, a big four lane road that goes over some railroad tracks that was down to two lanes, one in each direction because of construction. And that at that point he saw them go airborne over the bridge <laughs> And he turn thought his lights turned around, <laughs> turn around, <laughs> come back to town. But we get to the bar and I walk in and I see my godson in the bar. And I'm like, holy fuck, what are you doing here? He, said, he just came to have a beer. And uh, we start, we start clearing out the bar. I f we found four rounds. One ended up right by the DJ that fucking hit the wall right next to him, fell on the floor. Did Luckily, he play that nobody funky music. No, he was playing funky music. Yeah, he was. Luckily, nobody got hit. Four fucking rounds into the bar, nobody got hit. So we start doing our investigation, and no one says, you know, anything about the bad guys. They don't really no know one, who it was. No they, one saw the, nothing. The owner thinks he knows who it was. He's got, you know, he's got pretty decent cameras. So he tells me that we we kicked these these guys out. Air quotes. And I think it was them. That's all he tells me. So we're clearing out the bar. We got to do, my buddy Dan and I have to process the scene and collect the evidence and take pictures and all that shit. And I end up talking to the bar back. I don't know. That's what they call them. You know, they, they're yeah. hustling. Yeah. So this guy's 30, first of all, and he's a bar back. Not judging, but. He's 30. probably living in his mom's basement too. Probably. So I go, um, could you would you recognize who we think the offenders are? And he's like, well, I'll tell you. He goes, um, we had, they were two gangbangers and there were two other rival gangbangers in the bar. And these two who they think were the suspects were talking shit to the other two gangbangers. So the owner who told me, the owner said, well, I told the two at the bar to walk out the front and I asked my bar back to bring the other two out the back. They have a lock gate in the back, out the back parking lot. And that's all the owner told me. So then I'm talking to the bar back and I go, what happened? He goes, well, I, uh, I went out there to let him out. And one of them put a gun to my head and said, unlock the fucking gate. So the owner doesn't tell me that. Now all this happened. Like they never called the cops for any of this. No, they didn't handle this all happens. You got an ag assault with a firearm, you know, no one's calling the police. And then eight minutes later is when the shots came through the window. It has to be these fucking assholes. Probably. So we f we're fucking processing it. And then typical, you know, no one calls the police. And then my buddy Gio happened to be Dan and I were doing all the processing. We only have four guys on the street. So Dan and I are tied up with this mess. My sergeant and, and Gio are d handling all the other calls. After losing the car, John, my sergeant started coming back to town and Gio started retracing his foot, his wheel prints has started doing yeah. the chase route and as geo's driving down one of our main streets he sees a magazine in the fucking middle of the street he's like holy shit so he stops huh. there's a mag in the street with eight bullets he blocks off the street with a squad then he looks over in the grass there's a pistol then there's a fucking spring for the mag over there and a huge <laughs> debris field so these guys must have as they were being chased by my sergeant throwing their weapon out the window john never saw it so we were like you know, busting his balls because I don't know. Need... Could have dropped the gun out the window. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, he's getting any thicker glasses. Yeah. So when I was processing that one in the chamber, like thank God no kid came walking along. Just, there was no mag in it, but one in the chamber. Thank God no one picked it up and just fucking decided to shoot it. So we handled that. That was one of our 
that takes all night. That was my report. Oh yeah, that's a so huge, that's a yeah. You're that's done. A huge. When that comes out, that that's your call. Like yeah, and, and you're done. Your night. Yeah, for the whole night, you know. So the rest of the guys were running around chasing calls while Dan and I were doing all the processing, and then I had to write the five page report or whatever. So that I found that interesting as a welcome back, and then oh yeah, I can't wait for mine. On Monday, the actual first day back, I, we're in roll call, and I get the call for, um, we have a bunch of sleazy motels. We've got a bunch of stabbing cabins that rent condoms for, or not rent, sell condoms for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, you got to give rented. it back. Give it back you're, when you're, you're done. You're rented by the out. hour. Yeah, we'll wash it out, give it back. Um, but one of these places is just like the worst fucking motel I've ever seen. So I get the call for... Take the burglary or take the call for the woman who said she had $60,000 stolen from her. Right. I get up. I'm like, okay, right off the bat at this motel. No. $60,000 was stolen. This will be a short call because there's either a drug dealer got robbed <laughs> or a prostitute or some bullshit. Or both. So, or both. So I'm already – now, for all the young officers out there, I will – I will um, tell you not to predetermine the outcome of a call because that's never, if you're already going into a mindset that this is bullshit, it's never it a good thing. It always ends up being legit. One day you're going to show up at a call where $65,000 was stolen and it's actually going to be $65,000 was stolen. So there's an Indian couple. Um, it's a red Indian, not feather. Right. Push start, not pull start. <laughs> I've uh, heard that one before. <laughs> not being racist. And we're, to, and, and we're, we're banned. <laughs> Dear IA. I'm going to lose my sponsors before we even start. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I get to the Fleabag Motel. Fleabag, on, uh, which is actually a good show that's on Netflix if you ever get a chance. I get to the Fleabag Motel. And um, they have this really small, you walk in and then there's a window and there's these two Indian people that manage this hotel and their job is to clean the rooms and then they check people in and they actually live there. So I don't know if they actually get paid, but they get paid something, but there's a living quarters there for them. It's actually pretty, they may have taken three rooms and made them one apartment or whatever. And uh, I check in with them and there's, I don't know, six people in there. And so the, the male and the female that manage the motel, they've been saving up for a house. So they actually called their realtor over because he's a he can translate well. And what they were doing was anytime they got paid, I guess, they take their money and they put it in a bank bag. Then they put the bank bag in a purse. They put the purse in a suitcase and they put the suitcase in a closet. So on this day, they went to the closet to get the suitcase, to get the purse, to get the bank bag, to take out a little bit of money because there was a religious holiday coming up and they wanted to donate money. Yeah. And it was all gone. And they had between sixty-five and seventy-five thousand dollars in cash because they were buying a house. They'd already paid their earnest money. And then the first thing that they thought of was, I got to call my realtor because now I don't have $75,000 of cash yeah. that I was going to use to buy my house. So he came over there. Then their nephew and a brother-in-law. By the way, everyone's last name was the same. And they weren't all related. Those are all always the same last name. fun reports to write. Yeah. So, you know, I'm asking them, no forced entry. They have a camera that might show the closet where it was kept. But they were sh pointing stuff out to me. They said, as soon as I walk back there, they're like, okay, th there's the closet. But right here on this wall, when you walk in the room, is a cabinet, like kitchen cabinets. But this got all the day's receipts and money in it that hasn't been dropped. That was not touched. Over here is the cash drawer that has money in it and jewelry that wasn't touched. Somehow someone knew that there was a bank bag and a purse and a, and a suitcase in the closet. And that's what these people went for. So I'm asking them. Who's been in here? First of all, who knew about this? Nobody. Just the two people that own the money. Not well, even the somebody realtor. did. <laughs> right? Um, okay. Were you ever, was anybody ever in here and you guys were not in here? 
no, one of us is always here. Then the, the wife tells me that her routine is in the morning, she cleans the rooms. Her husband is a sheik. So he sleeps in his own room. That's their religion. He's usually sleeping when she's out cleaning the rooms. I asked her, do you always lock the door before you, when you leave? She says, no. So it's possible someone came in when she went out to clean the room. Someone snuck in. He's sleeping. You can, uh, nothing was ransacked, though. So they knew so exactly started, where they were going. Yeah, we started working all this stuff. It turns out, first of all, it was legit call. So I just wanted to remind people that not everyone trusts banks. Not everyone. And these weren't the owners of the motel that are hiding money. These are employees who are saving money to buy a house and maybe didn't trust the banks. So my friends were like, fuck these people. Well, they thought it was the motel owner that lost the money. They didn't understand when, when I first told them. Because, yeah. yeah, fuck the motel people. They're like what like they're doing in, in our town. And then, yeah. Yeah, like a live in kind of like manager almost. Yeah. But these are actually hardworking people trying to buy a house. So my buddy got the, my buddy uh, who's a detective got assigned the case. And I, I asked the people that were there, they have video surveillance outside and um, inside. And I asked how, how can we get it off of their recorder? And only the owner knew the owner was out of town. The owner sold the hotel to another owner who owns a motel in town. They all have the same name too, but they're not related. So finally it works out where they, they were able to get the video footage, which was not the correct timestamp. So if you own a video camera surveillance system, please have the timestamp and date correct. Just another pointer. Or at least but know my, the difference so that yeah. you can tell us. <laughs> my buddy scrubbed the video, and sure enough, um, four gypsies show oh, up. fucking gypsies. Yeah. Um, a woman comes into the motel, and she wants to see a room. Now, this is not a place that you go to see rooms. Yeah. This is a place you take your prostitute to fuck. Do some coke and then leave an hour later. No one should be seeing rooms. So she comes in to see a room. So she gets the woman out and then she's got a friend that wants to see a room. So the guy comes out and they both walk away. Third person gets out of their car, stands guard. Fourth person goes in the fucking motel, goes in, looks around, opens the closet, sees a suitcase, opens the suitcase, finds a purse Opens a purse, finds a money bag, takes off with fucking Does a happy dance. to $70,000. Using a plate, a, a car that's rented out of another state with a, a license plate that comes back to nothing. Yeah. So Gypsies it was actually, are like, they're professional. Fucking things. hate them. They're like, like just looking at it from an objective standpoint, like they're really good at what they do. They are. And here's what really pisses me off about the call. I, we have a lot of gypsy scams in our area. Obviously, because of the big cities right here. Yeah. And I at, we get them where they go, hey, I'm trimming your neighbor's tree. The old people, can you come yeah. in your backyard and make sure that I'm not crossing your property line? And as the, as the owners are in the back of the yard, people go in the front door of the house yeah. and they burglarize them. This happens all the time. So I specifically asked these people, did anybody come here and ask you to leave this property to see something? No. I don't know if they were, the woman was a mess. Yeah, I was going to say, they just lost, you know. I know. I don't know if it was just bucks. Like, shock and she couldn't straight. remember or embarrassed and didn't want to say. Because that's probably, obviously a thing, that's too. That's probably a combination of all of it. Yeah. That was my first night back, and I felt so bad. And then to see that we actually had video footage of the, of the crime, and then it's really going to be hard to fucking catch these assholes. No, oh, yeah, because yeah, this, like pretty much they're not. I actually might want to become a gypsy because obviously it's really easy to get money. It's funny because all I can think of anytime I hear gypsy now is freaking Borat. <laughs> yeah, you never get this. You never get this. King in the castle. Uh, king in the castle. King in the castle. <laughs> all right, so I'll 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 go to some other stories later. I just want to do one quick thing, um, and we can move on because I've got stuff I can save up. The same night that we were handling the drive-by, my buddy who's a detective with us, is a he's the mayor of the town over. And uh, one of their officers was ambushed and shot in the face, or shot on a domestic. So um, he responded to a domestic disturbance at midnight. He was the backup officer. And 
he happened to be right around the corner. So he shows up at this apartment and it, the call came out with a, it's a verbal argument between a mother and a son. And I love when the dispatch says this cause they're taking somebody's word, no weapons, no intoxication. Cause they always ask, are they intoxicated? Do they have a weapon? And then they tell us no weapons, no, no intox. Yeah. So the officer who gets there first just decides to walk up to the apartment. Now, the apartment complex that he went to is similar to like a motel six that uh, that's the only way I can describe it is the apartment Fairly doors are, are outside. The apartment yeah. doors are outside with two floors. You know what I mean? So it's like and a motel. They all, they all face like inward kind of towards each other. Yeah. So he walks up the stairs and then he's up on the second floor and he, he sees that uh, the screen door is closed, but the, the room, the door is open to the apartment. So he walks up to the door and announces himself. Now, my buddy, who's the mayor, saw the body cam footage, so he told me all of this stuff. So he shows up, he knocks on the door, the, the lady's sitting in her house, and he says, hi, ma'am, you know, you call, yeah, okay, come on in. So he, he walks into to the apartment, into the doorway, and he's still holding the screen door open. His partner hasn't showed up yet. He says, what's the problem? She says, I'm just having an argument with my son. He says, okay, where is he? Oh, he's in his room. Okay. Can you have him come out? She says, yes. So she calls for his name. So the guy comes out. He's at my, like, so if, if you're listening to this, you're standing, looking straight ahead. And then at your 10 o'clock would be the room where this offender comes out. So if straight, straight ahead is 12, like yeah. just slightly to your left. So guy comes out of the room, all calm. And the officer says to him, you know, hey, man, how's it going? Oh, fine. Then he pulls out a gun and starts shooting. Jeez. He hits the officer six times. God bless it. Officer gets shot four times in one leg, two times in another leg. Stumbles out of the fucking apartment. It falls down on the walkway out there. Guy comes out, shoots him two more times. Two or four more times. Shoots him in the back. And then he retreats into the apartment. The officer somehow makes his way down the fucking stairs. He's been hitting the femoral artery. His legs are broken. Um, second officer pulls up. Sergeant pulls up. They only run in four guys at night. Uh, my buddy said that he wa when he's watching the body cam footage, you know, the one officer pulled out his tourniquet and said, this is going to fucking hurt, but I need, to, I need to put this on you. So they fucking tourniquet his leg. And then they drive up on the lawn to give cover they leave one officer who's got no long gun to guard the door and they fucking put him in a car and take him to the hospital. And then of course, other agencies started coming, you know, and they end up fucking talking this piece of shit out of his fucking apartment. But thank God the officer is, is alive. He's had, I don't know, six surgeries at this point. I'd say a, probably a bunch of surgeries. Yeah. Um, bunch of surgeries but i actually just saw a picture of him on facebook with a smile um he's doing better but uh that i wanted just to say you know my prayers are going out for the family and then you know knowing the chief and the mayor over there this one really and it's the next door over yeah <laughs> it's like it, hit, it hits close in the same time, another officer down in Texas was ambushed on a domestic call and murdered. So, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you are a police officer, for years we've been telling everybody to wait for your backup on domestic situations. It's, we, I, I ingrain it in my trainees, but there are times where we just go, fuck it, I'm going to go talk to these people. Now is not the time to say, fuck it, I'm going to go talk to these people. Well, if it's it goes not, along with predetermining, you know, what you think you have. If it's not a, on a, an in-progress battery call and it's just a verbal argument, which I don't believe we should be fucking taking reports for in the first place, I'm going to say this time blue in the face. It's none of my fucking business what you're arguing about with your family member if there's no violence involved. We don't take that None report. of my business. Huh? I don't take that report. I don't. We have that. to do. We have to fucking physically take reports for that bullshit. And That's it's stupid. fucking ridiculous. That's retarded. And this is one of those cases. It's a fucking verbal argument. Settle it yourself. And here he gets ambushed. So if you're taking these calls on your own and if you're a county sheriff and your backup's miles away, I understand that. 
if you're a city cop or a village mis- municipality police officer, wait for your fucking backup. Because I don't know if two guys show up at the same time, if that guy's got balls enough to pull a fucking gun. He got the jump on one officer. Or I don't if, know he if he does, he, he maybe takes a couple rounds to the leg instead of, what, 10? Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll end with that. I've got other stuff that we'll move on to next week, but... Um, that will be. It's good to be back at work. Eh. Um, it's good to be oh, able to work. I wrote a ticket the other night, and I'm gonna only mention it because I don't write many anymore. Because <laughs> what's what was the it sense? For? You know. So I was on a call, and my sergeant and I were coming back from this call, and I'm at a T intersection. I'm at the street facing north, major street going east and west. Car in front of me, watching traffic. Whatever. We get yellow light. And east and west traffic get the yellow and then they get the red and then we get the green and then some fucking cunt goes right through the fucking red light. I'm like, holy fuck. I almost hits the guy in front of me because thank God someone taught him well. Don't just go when you get a green light. Look left. Yeah. First Double of all, check. look left. Yeah. Look, look right eventually, <laughs> but look left first. <laughs> You're on the left. <laughs> right. So thank God. Yeah. Thank God he fucking didn't go right away. So I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And it's like 7 at night, so it's early, or 7.30. So I fucking start chasing her down. I got my lights on. She ain't pulling over. I got my spotlight on the back of her car. She's still driving. We get to another main intersection. She turns southbound. I turn southbound. And then there's a car in front of her that, like, pulls over because he thinks, you know, hey, the police are behind me. I'm going to pull over like I'm supposed to. should probably get out of the way. So she... She starts slowing down and she comes to a stop. I got my spotlight directly on her car. I go to get out of the car. Uh, the car in front takes off because I'm. he knows I'm not going yeah. to stop him. So she's like, I'm going to fucking drive away. So she starts going again. I'm like, motherfucker, get back in the car. Fucking blast my siren. <laughs> Finally get her to stop. I don't want to say this to be insensitive or, and I'm not racist. I don't like pulling over um, African-Americans. Because the climate, just because they think we're racist. And it, it's always, bo- I give more breaks to black people than any other race. <laughs> I write white people more. <laughs> and that's the truth. And I'm like, I pull her over. She rolls down her window. I smell weed. Right off the bat. Mm. And I'm like, and she's giving me a fucking look. And I'm like, you know, good evening, ma'am. I'm Officer Morazzo with this police department. The reason I'm pulling you over, the whole verbal judo thing. Yeah. I observed I observed your vehicle, not you. I observed your vehicle travel through the red light at Judd and Irving. Oh, shit, I just said the intersection. So she goes, it was yellow. The fucking attitude right off the bat. <laughs> and I go, no, it no. was red. And had the guy in front of me gone right away, you fucking would have killed him. So and she got possibly nothing. yourself. She's got nothing for that. And I said, license and insurance, please. I don't have my driver's license. I said, you don't have a driver's license or you don't have it on you. I don't have it on me. Okay. I'm going to get my notebook out. Spell your last name. So she gives me last name, first name and a birth date. I said, okay, do you have a middle initial? I ain't got one. Okay. I'll be right back. So my butt drew had pulled up and he's like, did you tell her to sit tight? You'll be right back. And then (laughs) double tap the hood. (laughs) No. Oh, man. Should have. I didn't go past the hood. I went back to <laughs> the other way. Or, I mean, the, the roof of the car. The, yeah. So I go back to my car, and Drew's like, I can fucking smell the weed over here. I'm like, yeah, I know. Hey, it's that good, good. So I <laughs> run her. The, the 28 came back, the license plate, with a name. Same name she gave me, but with a fucking middle initial. Hmm. But no 27 attached, no driver's license. So I run it over the air. Nothing. No record on file. God damn it. Get out. Go to the car. I have to knock on the window because she got the fucking window up. She's like, mm-hmm. naturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, what the fuck's your name? Because I'm not in the mood. We're going to play games with me. This is not going to go well. I told you my name. And I said, here it is. Is this spelled properly? Uh-huh. I go, oh, by the way, you do have a middle initial. That's fucking E. What am I missing? Try Rogers blank and blank. Oh, so now you have another name. I said, is it hyphenated? No, it ain't hyphenated. Okay, go back to the squad. Run that. Lo and behold, valid driver's license. What the fuck? I'm playing games with this fucking bitch. 
So I fucking write her. Write her ticket for going through the red light. I wish I had more. And it's not taken for re- forever. Not for the reckless driving, for failing to yield to your emergency lights and siren? <laughs> yeah. And in the construction zone. Oh, dude. I had towed her car. I could have fucking ripped 30 her day hold. a new one. So, but Cook County, they don't give a fuck. I'm just care. that right now. I've made up my mind. I don't care what DA's like. Yeah. I'm just going to keep so, doing my job. You want to you want to file the case? I know. Cool. You don't want to file the case? Cool. I get paid so the I go back. I go back to the car, and she's still got an attitude, and I go, now can you show me your insurance? So she takes her phone and just goes, you know, like this, out the window. I see it. I make it bigger. It's it's valid. I go, I go listen, um, when was the last time you smoked? She's like, I had a cigarette. I go, no, no, no. When was the last time you smoked weed in your car? Talk about that cigarette weed. I don't smoke weed. I go, then someone broke into your fucking car and smoked a blunt because I can smell it coming out. <laughs> She's like, uh, it ain't me. And I'm like, you know what? I could have just taken her out. And I'm like, did you, you hit a skunk? Yeah. So I go, well, here's your fuck. Here's your here's your ticket. Uh, follow the directions on the ticket. She takes it, throws it on the floor. <laughs> I'm like, fuck her. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Yeah. Goodbye. I should have taken her out and just made her sit and search her car and all that other bullshit. But you should have done yeah. her for a marijuana DUI. I'm not a DRE. You don't and need to be DRE. Those, and you know, and you County, know objective. You, you know objective signs and symptoms. Cook County, that would that would go as far as I could spit it, on you right now in, from my computer screen. And in your estimation, it impaired her ability to operate a motor vehicle safely. Yeah, you know what? Also, that would and because require? there is no field test, you take a, right. You take her for a blood draw, and you book her on the charge. And if her blood Let comes back good, then she'll don't drop, drop the case. It. And if not, it's going to cost her like fifteen to twenty Ten. grand. Yeah, because she's going to kill she somebody. Some money. You know what else that would require me going to court in the middle of the day when I'm supposed to be sleeping? Yeah, that could be a bummer. So. <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not lying here. This is a, a show that's open and honest. I ain't fucking going to court. And I got Monday. We have a trial uh, coming up on Monday afternoon at fucking 1.30 in the afternoon after we work all weekend, which some of us will have to work 18 hours because they're short. So Monday we have to be in court, not Zoom, in court for a trial. That's not even my arrest. And this was from a guy who ran from us in a fucking snowstorm <laughs> last year with snow up to our knees that we chased three blocks for a domestic battery where the fucking person didn't want to sign complaints after we caught him. Cool. Yeah. So they still filed it? Well, they filed. Um, we ended up booking them with obstructing information and um, resisting arrest. So that's what it is okay. now. Well, yeah. At least, at least you had somebody willing to charge him with something. Yeah. And I, I'm looking at a rundown that Brandon wrote to show this week. So if there's anything wrong that you guys don't like, just tell Brandon. Um, it's funny because the stuff that you mentioned in a rundown, I actually had. You were... You were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we're right on the same level, dude. Okay. Our minds are, we're in sync. We're of one mind. Yeah. So that was my, one of my weeks at work. A uh, couple of the highlights. Uh, well, that's all and, we care about is the highlights, Mike. Yeah. And we can do the, um, we can move on to, we've, I think we've got time to do some of the new stuff that you wanted to touch on. Yeah. Which one do you want to do? You want to do the top one or you want to wait until a verdict actually comes in? Yeah. Well, and I don't think it's called Ryden House. I think it was Written House with two T's. Eh. Not sure. Um, I don't care. It's funny. So we were going to talk about the Written House verdict, and we'll wait. We'll do that on our next show because it'll it'll then be in. I thought it might be in today, and that would have been awesome to talk about. Kind of kind of scares me. Because it scares if, you? Yeah. So here's the thing that scares me is that there's not one smart person on that jury that is going to sit there and go, no matter what the verdict is, if it is released on Friday, it is going to be a weekend of violence. Oh yeah. Because people are going to use an excuse and they're not going to have to go to work on the weekend. So I'm I'm hoping and praying that there is at least one person on that jury who, if they're all going to acquit or they're all going to go guilty. I'm I hope there's at you... least one person right. that like at the last second when they get a consensus on Friday is like, nope, change my mind, change my mind, talk to me on Monday. <laughs> I'm because... sending these two um, pictures that we were sharing in our my friends that I go hiking with, you know, we're all cops. So yeah, um, one of oh, them, yeah. one no, of the they, victims. Well, they can't be called victims. Uh, the judge did rule that they could not be referred to as victims. Oh, good. One the of the because, because that it's was a, shot because it's a self defense trial. Yeah, he had right, right, right. Charged and convicted of eleven counts of child molestation. Yeah, he was convicted on two amended counts, and he was actually also 
This is with, with children, boys, and including anal rape. He's one of the scumbags that got shot. Yeah. So, I, I mean, look, Miss, young Mr. Rittenhouse could not have known that. Picked better targets. <laughs> oh, but, oh, no. I couldn't mean, have known that. But No, couldn't have known it going in. Either also way, couldn't I have picked better just, targets. I, I think that, you know, no matter how you feel about it, you just kind of go, Eh, no, here's what I go. Eh, I mean, is the world a better place? It's not for me Good. to say, but I think Fuck so. Fuck these <laughs> felons. I don't care. No one's rehabilitated. Uh, this group that was out there causing riots and trouble mm -hmm. that was chasing Rittenhouse down and wanted to do him harm were all fucking scumbags. Yeah. And then of the three. You have the not one guy admitting that, did he shoot you? Uh, when you had your gun, you know, not pointed at him? No. When right. you pointed your gun at him, did he shoot you? Yeah. Yeah, because that's <laughs> that the is, response. That is my f my new favorite thing in the world is to see that fat prosecutor in the background just head in his hand like God, I know that's the best part. It. Yeah, that's fantastic. So we'll 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 dive deeper into that when we have yeah when we have more time we actually um, have resolution to that I'm gonna case send you one other some pretty interest pretty interesting things I think that go into it. That yeah, are clouding kind of the the way people feel about it uh, from a national perspective. I just want to say one one observing thing. I'm watching what's, the news. Coverage. What's your observation? Why the fuck is BLM out there? They got no fucking dog in this hunt. Yeah. No black people <laughs> were shot. Shot through the they, whitest kids you know. <laughs> I I know what the fuck. I, I saw one of them with a sign. White guy with yeah. a gun is gets off. Black guy with a gun is guilty. And I'm like, totally different fucking circumstances. But I will say, don't bring a skateboard to a gunfight. Yeah. <laughs> I'll end with that. Don't, don't, don't bring knives to gunfights. Don't bring skateboards to gunfights. Right. And if you're going to bring yeah, a gun so, to a gunfight, be ready. Because it's coming. <laughs> um, the second topic we can talk about. You can, you can introduce that topic. Because okay. we talked about it at work. And I talked about it today again, and I'm fucking pissed. But so I, I first saw this when it was mentioned in our our Instagram little chat that we have with all of the other, other you know, uh, police Working officers, cops. woodworkers. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, there's no way. Like, there's no way. <laughs> it seems unreal, right? And then I and then I saw like other people like so that didn't get any news out here. Uh, some of the people that I know that are closer to retirement that have gone to the point where they they don't care what you know what repercussions may happen started posting. I go no, this like this is going to be like that thing where uh, people were posting that like Ella French uh, like had just returned to duty from giving birth and that ended up being false or something like that. I forget what the whole story was. Yeah. They, but it was, said but this was whole alive. national thing that like was just wrong. It was just some jackass trying to go viral. I mean, it's gotta be the same thing. So I Googled it and sure as shit. Oh yeah. The, was it Copa? What? Like Copa the is the citizens off civilian office of police accountability. Copa. Okay. So Copa decided that officer, Ella French, may she rest in peace, who was murdered on duty. Uh, what was that? Like four or five months ago? Almost six months ago? Mm, not that long. Not six months and, ago. No, I, okay. Either way. Yeah. She has been long gone and buried for a while. And they decided to uh, recommend that she be suspended for three days for her part <laughs> in a 2019 raid of a social worker where which was a it was a huge the wrong, thing it, it was foobard from the beginning <laughs> yeah but this was a huge case here and it's been on the news for years and the, all the body cam footage i've seen of this incident she was there they went to the wrong home and they went into this woman's home with some naked black woman um, and they, they thought they reasonably believed they were there serving a search warrant yeah. or something else they weren't they just, it was a mistake they made a mistake she, this woman's traumatized because the police were in her house. Ella French Probably. is the one person who fucking put a blanket on her. Who? She's the quote, one that. To quote the victim. She is the only one that showed her, quote, any dignity or respect. Right. 
And so this fucking Copa pieces of shit want to fucking suspend her posthumously. Yeah. How does that work even? Here's a hero. I, Let's fucking suspend them. I know where they were murdered by some piece of shit, but we're going to suspend them and have that on a record. It, on a record. It, to me, this is this is how you know you crossed the line and you went way too far. When even Beetlejuice herself, Mayor Lightfoot, goes, "Yeah, it's kind of messed up. Like I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with putting that info out there." Like when when you're on the same side as Lori Lightfoot, like, or when yeah, that's you're not... on, like, when even she's like, that's wrong. Right. Then you know what's fucking right. wrong. <laughs> then, then you might want to reevaluate your, uh, your hate, stance. You know, but no, I read that. I could not believe it. Like, here we go with the hate who, word again. I fucking hate those that? people. W what like, person? They're sitting there. They're, they're at their meeting. I don't know if there's fucking 10 or 15 people there and they're eating lunch, you know, that they're getting paid to $80,000 a year to, to judge police officers way after the fact oh man oh oh ella french yeah she was murdered oh i think we should suspend her who's that fucking idiot and, the and then everyone goes okay yeah everyone just Meh. for not what having her body cam yeah oh my god dude you gotta be like it, it sometimes it feels like you're just you're fighting a losing war like you just can't win i i can't even comment on it it's just so fucking it's it's so fucking far ridiculous. Out, it's so far out there that you think that there's no way in hell this is true. I'm done. I'm done with but, all those fucking people. But when I when I heard about them where they hit the wrong house, it got me thinking. Mike, have you ever hit the wrong house? Because I have. <laughs> I'm gonna say I've gone to the wrong location numerous times. I've never hit a house and gone in. I've gone inside the uh, house looking to apprehend somebody. And then had to slowly back out the door and go, sorry, I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I've done it so. in a dream, but not in <laughs> fucking reality. So it's really, really, oh man. Okay, so. it's It's got to be a horrible feeling, you know. It is. This, this, yeah. So this happened um, 2020, last year. Okay. Um, we get, my patrol team gets tasked by our sexual assault unit to go apprehend um, a grandfather that has sexually assaulted his granddaughter, his four-year-old granddaughter. So we get the two patrol teams on the channel together, and we go, okay, cool. Um, according to mom, he grandpa is in apartment, you know, X. Confirmed at three different times. Cool. Front door That's is That's a lot of confirmation. Unlocked. There is one other person in there who has unlocked the front door for you. Cool. Good to go. <laughs> nice. So we do our super cool tactical approach. Yeah. Reach, touch the knob, give it that little slight turn just to make sure that this door is in fact unlocked. And lo and behold, it is. <laughs> and it is. I'm like, oh, yes. It's go time. All right. We got our Spanish speaker here because it's all Spanish speaking. All right. Cool. Ready? See. Si. Fly the door. Uno, Boom. dos, tres. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Everybody trace. comes through the door. Please show me your hands. Show me your hands. Manos arriba. Manos arriba. And then we start calling out that. the suspect's name. You do that name. good, by the way. Sorry. Yeah. And then uh, call the suspect's name, and both guys in the apartment look at us and go, No okay? say. <laughs> and yeah. one guy, like, I look at the guy who's like, we were told the suspect is like sleeping on a futon in the kitchen. I shit you not, there's a futon in the goddamn kitchen. Of course there is. There's a guy sleeping on it. It's supposed to be, yeah. and I forget the guy's name. Jose. But I, sure, we'll use Jose. <laughs> so I look at him, I go, Jose! As like, I'm on gun on him. And the, the guy's sleeping have in him, the kitchen on a him, futon. Yes, have him at gunpoint. Yeah. Jose! He goes, no, Jose. And then he points to the shared wall. And I look back at my Sarge, who looks back at me, and he gets on his phone. And he goes, "You said next, apartment X, right? Next apartment Y." He goes, "No, it's apartment Y." Oh my god! Oh, sh and I just I see the blood drain from his face. He goes, "Shit, that's awesome, dude." He goes, "All right." He goes, "Hold on." He goes, "It's that one." 
like, Sarge, we already like rushed in and started yelling and screaming. Like they know we're here. Yeah. Right. They heard the whole fucking commotion. So I hit my buddy that spoke Spanish. and I go, can you apologize to him? We're going to go get the other guy. (laughs) And like, we're back. And he's like, Oh, pardon, pardon, pardon. (laughs) And it was great. It was great. They didn't didn't file a lawsuit against you. Did they? No. You know what the guy said? He goes, we're illegal. Don't draw. No, he just looks at us and goes, he's okay. And then lays back down and goes to sleep. <laughs> As we oh go barreling God. through the other door. That's fucking awesome. And start yelling, Jose, manos anyway. And he goes, oh, my God. <laughs> Good stuff, dude. Like, oh, you, like, what are the odds that both, like, and, and this is not like a super nice neighborhood where you would leave your front door unlocked. Like, this is a gang neighborhood. Yeah, and they have their fucking door unlocked. Yeah. It's just like, oh. That's awesome. And my buddy and I, we still talk about like, dude, that could have been real, real bad. <laughs> yeah, man, you could have. Good thing one of them didn't inadvertently reach for something that wasn't a weapon. Yeah, you're thinking could've... they're going for a weapon, and then you're killing an innocent guy in the wrong apartment. Yeah. And I mean, okay. I'm telling you, we confirmed it. I like till we were blue in the face. Yeah. Well, you're going off the intel that you had, and that's yeah. what. And like, that's what the these officers is... did is on the phone, direct line, with the detective that is interviewing daughter and mother. And it, it just goes to show you that you can still, like, mistakes happen. With good intel, you can still make mistakes. And yeah. none of those people are suing because, jeez, oh, I just can't say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> you can draw your own conclusions as to why your police department's not getting sued. Well, it's because um, we- we apologized, and like literally nothing came of it. <laughs> right. All right. Well, um, did you want to, since you picked, I have a hero or a badass of the week, both of them. That's we one can person. use either no, one. I, do your thing. Tell us okay, your story gonna... for your hero of the week, but I'm just going to add just the name of the Bentonville officer. He's going to be my hero and badass of the week. Okay. So... For our hero of the week, we have, and there's a video going around um, Instagram. I just saw it today. And today is the, what is today? The 18th. So there's a video going around of a off-duty Baltimore PD sergeant who is at a barbershop in East Baltimore getting a haircut, mind his own business. Gentleman walks in, produces a gun. Shoots the barber. Now, did the barber finish the haircut? I look. The surveillance footage is kind of <laughs> grainy, but but Sarge looked pretty lined up. Okay. So, uh, Holy suspect fuck. starts like, like ushering this this off duty sergeant kind of out of the way so he can go finish the job. Really? That's yes. ballsy. I'll, I'll I think I sent it in the. Uh, in I'm trying to look at the little, video group thing and uh okay so the sergeant sure just moves out of the way turns around reaches for his concealed gun comes nice. up pop, pop, pop. mag dump shots. oh no no mag dump controlled nice failure drill love it drops drops him catches himself going tunnel vision on the guy and then yeah immediately yeah. checks his backside to scan for more threats and then starts yelling at the other guys in there call the police call the fucking police now that's awesome, dude. So that I saw, I I read the the story in the New York Post, and I was like, "That's awesome!" Like we don't have his name or anything like that. Yeah. But then you uh, see the video today. I'm like, that that right. right there is why I am always carrying. Oh fuck yeah! Because you never know. So I'm gonna have to look up the video because I clicked on the link that of the link that you sent us. And there's a story, and I can't find. A video there, so I'll look in our. Well, I sent the video tank. on uh, Instagram to, to our chat. But how long so. ago? It was today. Is when I saw it. Let me see. I'll double check. You can go ahead and tell your story while I double check. Oh, I see it now. You okay? I got it. All right, I'll look at it later. No, um, I just wanted to. As so, that's your hero or badass of the week. Which one is that? I'm gonna say hero. Because there were two other innocent people in there that were yeah. in imminent danger of death or serious bodily injury. I would also call him a badass. Yeah. Because he, he stayed calm and then he finished yeah. the job. Yeah. That's, I mean, 
Same thing with uh, the other article I posted of the Soledad police chief going head on with a, a reckless driver that actually hit and killed a pedestrian of an officer in the jurisdiction that was uh, chasing him. Yeah, tell that story. So this is just a few days ago. So there's a, uh, there's a couple of small towns in South Monterey County called Soledad and Greenfield. Soledad has a, uh, a state prison and then Greenfield gets all the parolees. Nice. Yeah. So uh, Greenfield PD goes to pull over a driver for, I think it was just speeding or running red light. They thought it was a DUI guy takes off. Says it was being spotted in a stolen car. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, that was the other part of it. It was a stolen car. So, apparently, they have a very loose chase policy, and they start chasing him. He goes into the city of Soledad, where he starts driving erratically and starts actually driving towards pedestrians in a shopping center. On purpose. On purpose. Starts targeting them. He has this uh, less than human being has been since charged with murder. He then leaves there, hops a curb, hits a pedestrian walking a bike, kills him. And continues on. The police chief in Soledad hears this happening, is in his car and is nearby, and goes head on and causes he's a head-on. He's in his on. squad car? He's in his... Personal car. Not his personal car. It's his department car, but it, yeah, that he uses, it's an unmarked. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's not... It's, it doesn't, I mean, it's got all the bells and whistles, but it doesn't have all yeah, the cool like paint Archie. scheme. Yeah. Okay. So he goes head on, boom. Head on, disables the vehicle. Suffers some minor injuries. Doesn't get out and, and cap the fuck? No, no. He, he decided to give up at that point. And he has since been charged with murder and actually made his first court appearance today where I think he entered a not guilty plea. Okay. Unbelievable. At that point, I see his bail's been set at more than a million dollars. Yeah, he's a terrific piece of shit. And it says um, they don't know when Chief Wasson will return to the force. And there was another might just, Greenfield might just officer who was injured. Was not yeah, so identified. looking at the uh, looking at the the photos and everything, it looks like Chief goes in, hits him head on, and then the Greenfield officer comes in from behind, okay, and rear ends that guy, and then they kind of like pinned him in. Made a sandwich out of him. Yeah, he made right. a shit sandwich. Shit sandwich for sure. All right, I uh, this is the oh so my hero and badass of the week is Bensonville. Police officer Stephen Kotluski, Kotluski, K O T L E W S K I. Officer Stephen Kotluski of the Bensonville Police Department is my hero and badass of the week for the story that I described earlier in reference to the being ambushed. So that is mine. I'm going to get pick. him a plaque. I'm going to get him a plaque because it's right and I can just give it to my buddy Frank and he'll yeah, hand you it just to him. hand it off. Uh, I don't have a question of the week. In reference to law enforcement or woodworking. And I just went to the Officer Down Memorial page and it's down for maintenance. Of course. I do have the info. We did lose a canine this week or this I past. saw that. So if you want to give us that. Yeah. So Canine Rogue of the Cedar Park uh, Police Department down in Texas passed away on November 8th of 2021. He, he suffered a fatal heart attack during a training. I. Uh, he had been on the job for seven years. So he was towards the end of his of his service. Yeah, that's, that's like 49 years in man years. Yeah. So I know for our department, like seven years and dog retires. So he was, he was probably getting close to retirement, which is super sad. Anytime that happens for anyone. Canine or human when you get close to the end. Don't think I don't think about that. You know what? I just went back to the website for a third time, and it's now back up. I got to wait for this music to end. All right, now it's time for the Officer Down Memorial. And there are way too many names on this list again, Brandon. So we will go through these. Starting with October 30th, Police Chief Buddy Crabtree of the Eider Police Department in Alabama. End of watch Saturday, October 30th, 2021 from COVID-19.
Sergeant Timothy Werner of the Pittsburgh Bureau of Police in Pennsylvania. End of watch Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021 from COVID-19. He was 49 years old and served 21 years and five months on the job. Erie Police Department in Pennsylvania, Detective Sergeant Gary Tacconi. COVID-19, 56 years old, 24 years on the job, and also a military veteran. From the Waller County Sheriff's Office in Texas, Deputy Sheriff John Edward Moon passed away from COVID-19, 48 years old, 23 years on the job. From Kingsville Police Department in Texas, Senior Patrolman Sherman Otto Bennis Jr. End of watch Thursday, November 4th, 2021. I mentioned this in our discussion just recently about being ambushed. Senior Patrolman Sherman Bennis succumbed to gunshot wounds sustained three days earlier while responding to a domestic dispute in the 300 block of South Wanda in Kingsville. When Patrolman Bennis and other officers arrived at the scene, the male subject opened fire on them, striking Patrolman Bennis and prompting the two officers to return fire. The subject fled the scene, was apprehended by officers, and taken into custody. Senior Patrolman Bennis had served with the Kingsville Police Department for 19 years. He is survived by his wife, son, and two daughters. He was 58 years old. Robinson Township Police, Sergeant Scott M. Patton. End of watch, November 6th, 2021. Cause of death, COVID-19. Served 11 years and was 45 years old. Apologize for the delay. Deputy Sheriff Lena Nicole Marshall of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office in Georgia. End of watch Monday, November 8th, 2021 from gunfire. Deputy Sheriff Lena Marshall succumbed to gunshot wounds sustained three days earlier while responding to a domestic disturbance call at 6416 Highway 124 in Hoxton. As she and another deputy contacted someone in the home, a woman opened fire on them, wounding Deputy Marshall. Deputy Marshall's partner returned fire and killed the woman. Deputy Marshall was transported to a local hospital where she succumbed to her wounds. She had served with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office for almost two years and had previously served with the Barrow County Sheriff's Office Habersham Sheriff's Office, Winder Police Department, and the Helen Police Department. She is survived by her two daughters, son, two sisters, and two brothers. She was 49 years old. Police Officer Paramans Desai of the Henry County Police Department. End of watch Monday, November 8th, 2021 from gunfire. Officer Desai succumbed to a gunshot wound sustained at about 6 p.m. on November 4, 2021, while responding to a domestic violence call near the intersection of Keys, Ferry Road, and Floresta Drive in McDonough. Officer Desai was transported to Grady Memorial Hospital, where he remained on life support until succumbing to his wounds on November 8th. He continued to serve his community after his passing by having multiple organs donated. The subject who shot Officer Desai fled the area and remained at large for five days. He committed suicide after barricading himself inside a home in Clayton County as officers attempted to take him into custody. Police Officer Desai had previously served with the DeKalb County Police Department and the Georgia Department of Corrections. He is survived by his wife, 
and two young children. He was 38 years old. Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in Arizona, Lieutenant Chad Brackman, end of watch November 10th, 2021. Lieutenant Chad Brackman was struck and killed by a vehicle while directing traffic near the intersection of North 87th Street and North Pima Road in Scottsdale. He was working an overtime assignment at about 11 a.m. when he was struck. He succumbed to his injuries a short time later after being brought to the hospital. Lieutenant Brackman had served with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office for 22 years and was assigned to the Lake Patrol Division. He is survived by his wife, two children, and two stepchildren. He was 47 years old. Chicopee Police Department in Massachusetts, Detective Michael J. Dion, end of watch November 10th, 2021, cause of death, heart attack. Detective Michael Dion suffered a fatal heart attack while on traffic assignment in Chicopee. He had moved several large barricades as part of the road closure assignment when he collapsed. He was transported to the hospital where he was kept on life support to donate his organs. He served the Chicopee Police Department for 39 years. He is survived by his girlfriend and his daughter. He was 60 years old. Texas Department of Criminal Justice Correctional Institutions Division, Corrections Officer V. Kevin Dupree. End of watch was November 11th of 2021 from COVID-19. He was 66 years old and had served 28 years. Big Stone Gap Police Department in Virginia. Police Officer Michael D. Chandler. End of watch. November 13th, 2021, police officer Michael Chandler was shot and killed while performing a welfare check at a vacant home in the 2500 block of Orr Street. Officer Chandler was flagged down by a citizen at about 4 a.m. who asked him to check on a person who was inside of the home. When he arrived on the scene, he encountered a subject and was shot. A deputy with the Wise County Sheriff's Office located Officer Chandler in a ditch along the home's driveway. He was transported to Norton Community Hospital and then flown to Johnson City Medical Center in Tennessee where he succumbed to his wounds at about 7 p.m. The subject who shot him was arrested in Kingsport, Tennessee at about 8 p.m. after being located by at a motel by members of state, local, and federal law enforcement officers. It was determined the man was wanted for probation violations in, in Wise County, Virginia, as well as in South Carolina. The incident occurred on Officer Chandler's 29th birthday. In addition to serving with the Big Stone Gap Police Department, he also served as a volunteer with the Big Stone Gap Fire Department. He was 29 years old. Wisconsin State Patrol, Master Trooper Daniel Stainbrook, end of watch November 15th, 2021, from COVID-19. Trooper Stainbrook was 42 years old and had served 20 years. And from the Blair County Prison in Pennsylvania, Corrections Officer Rhonda Jean Russell, end of watch November 17th, 2021. Corrections Officer Rhonda Russell was shot and killed after a struggle for her firearm at the holding area of the Central Court Building at 615 4th Street in Altoona. A male inmate attacked and disarmed Officer Russell while waiting for a court hearing. An Altoona police officer who was in the court building saw the altercation between Officer Russell and the suspect. The officer shot at the suspect, but inadvertently struck Officer Russell. 
She was transported to the UPMC Altoona where she suc succumbed to her wounds. The inmate who attacked Officer Russell was charged with criminal homicide, attempted criminal homicide, kidnapping, and other related charges. Officer Ruffle, Russell was survived by her three sons and parents. She was 47 years old. And my buddy Brandon already gave you the canine officer who died. So that is that. There's way too many people on that list, Brandon. Yeah, taking, I mean, we usually do this show every week, so it's, it builds makes up. Makes it smaller chunks, but when we take like a week or two off, like, holy crap. Yeah. My goodness. All right, so that will conclude the law enforcement portion of our podcast. And we're going to move on to more uplifting news and, and stories and stuff. So we're going to get into the woodworking portion and Brandon. Working with wood in our hands. Yes, or tools. Or tools. Computers, lasers, CNCs, robots. Robots. I've got lots of robots on my shop. I got one. They're not working very hard because <laughs> I got a shitload of work to do. <laughs> So um, I guess I'll uh, go first since that's the way you wrote it. Um, let's see. Age, age before beauty. Mike, what's going on? You mean young person good? before good-looking people? Because that would be the other opposite, opposite way around. No, age before beauty. The old guy before the good-looking guy. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you have less time left on this planet, Mike. You got to go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. So you, I mean, just statistically Whoa, speaking. <laughs> holy shit. Okay, you're true. I mean, that's not, yeah. not a lie. Uh, well, while I'm still breathing on this side of the dirt, I, I started uh, really getting into this, the five-foot flag. I know I've been talking about it for, like, months, literally. Uh, so I cut all the wood for the flag, and I actually had to glue up a panel for the union because it's so big it's two feet long and it's like almost 18 inches tall it's like 17 and three eighths or some bullshit so i had to glue up now, some uh poplar for that okay how thick is is this five footer just three quarter inch okay because i so, didn't i i did a long one as like a, a tabletop for like a japanese style coffee table okay i ended up using two by four so it was like oh god and oh dude this thing was so freaking huge <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just a uh, standard poplar three quarter inch. And, but the one thing I'm doing different. So I painted all the stripes. I painted the union. I made it bigger so I could clamp it in my CNC. You know, I left two inches on each side. So it's four inches bigger. So it was actually 28 inches long. And then um, I got that, I got that CNC to get all the stars CNC that came out nice. You know, the uh, aura mask came up at some points and dust went underneath it so it didn't stick down. So I'm currently cutting out the bad aura mask and taping it over because I still have to paint the stripes. They wanted them painted white. And then, of course, I was going to try something new with this because this is a big flag. I normally use those strips of three-quarter inch poplar on the back. You know, and mm -hmm. I would this one would probably would require four or no, probably six. Yeah. And I figured... I'm not going to do that with this flag. I'm going to use biscuits and glue it okay. up like a big panel. Yeah. So I thought what would be a good idea was glue up all the short stripes together as one glue up. So I painted, painted all the stripes. Then I took all the short stripes. There's seven of them, obviously. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Seven <laughs> ones. I glued them up into a panel. Now You got to trust yourself. Yeah. When I was gluing it up, I had it all laid out and then I did, I used number 20 biscuits, the bigger ones. And I put one, I have all the, all the stripes are numbered on the side so I can see them and they won't be seen again. So I numbered them. And as I put them in my clamps and put the biscuits in there and the glue, by the time I got to the last stripe, I think I rotated it <laughs> because when I put it on the biscuits and then glued it up, it's slightly raised up. Oh, man. It's not sitting flat. So, like, the biscuits were off. So, I'm thinking it was the other side that was supposed to be, you know, there. Oh. But since it's a wood flag, really, it's who rustic. Cares? Yeah. <laughs> so, then, while I was gluing it up in the clamps, I always have a wet rag with me to wash off the glue. 
And what had happened? What had happened was what, it started washing off was. paint. Started wiping <laughs> oh, off black God. paint. So luckily, the stripe that was raised is the black one that most of the paint. You know, there's paint coming off of that one, and then one other one. But yeah. I was able to put painters tape down because it was sitting up against the flag, even though it's like you know a thirty second of an inch. That left a nice barrier. So I put I put tape down. I repainted the stripes while it was after after it was glued up, so you can't tell any of that stuff. So that's off to the side. Then I took one of the stripes, not two, took one, only one, because I'm going to engrave it, Morton Grove Police Department, and I took that one stripe, although I had four other black stripes, I took that one and went up to Jonathan Back's shop up in Wisconsin. Uh, J.R. Back is his handle on Instagram, and he's got a 5 by 10 foot CNC, and my uncle was here for the week on vacation, so we took a nice ride. It's two hours. So we were driving up there. I told them, hey, I'll be up there at 11. Now, I was up during the week, but I wasn't sleeping well. I'd sleep for like four fucking hours, and I'd wake up because I was trying to stay up during the day, and it just wasn't working right. So, But I had told John we'll be up there at 11, and that, which means I'd have to leave here at 9. That doesn't work out that way. Never Normally does. Normally doesn't work out that way. So we were running a little bit behind, and then there's two ways I can go to his house. I can take all expressway and save 10 minutes, or I can go off the back roads which is a beautiful drive, and it you know it just takes a little bit longer. So I figured, oh, we'll just go up the back way. Well, then we hit construction, <laughs> which wasn't on my Google map, <laughs> you know. So by the time we get into Wisconsin, I gotta take a piss, and yeah. we're not even we're not at his house yet. So we stop off at some gas station, which is like the size of a warehouse. It's huge, and uh, Uncle Harold goes in to get something to drink, I take a leak, and then he comes out. I'm like, okay, I gotta, it's my turn. And then he goes, hey, they have ice cream in there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you want to get some? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, let's go get some. So we go in. We both get a cone jammed with ice cream. And we start heading back to Jonathan's house, you know, eating our ice cream. And uh, we walked in there. No one's wearing a mask. So we each have a mask on. And I, the kid's scooping my ice cream. He's got no mask on. I'm like, do, do we need to have a mask on here? He goes, no, we're up fucking Wisconsin. No masks on this side of the line. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Take the mask we off. We don't care here. Yeah. So we got our ice cream. counties in California. Yeah. Yeah. We got the Jonathans, and um, it was great to see John again. And I'm enjoying, you know, building a relationship with him. And he, he took my one stripe. I don't know if I told you I only had one. And we put it on his machine. And then the machine went to engrave it without the spindle being on. And it went <laughs> across the wood. And then I, I oh, that's not good. And he's like, yeah. And everybody went, oh. Oh. And I'm like looking around for another piece of wood that I didn't bring. <laughs> so Where anyways. he another piece that I didn't put in the truck? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> that's two hours away. So he uh, okay. engraved it anyways. Right cause we thought it might still work it, the way it, yeah. where the damage Maybe was. Could... It might be in between a line. Yeah. Not the case. No. You're not that so lucky. So came back home. Had to remake that stripe. And I thought I would, I'll just engrave it myself. So I put it on my CNC and I was ramming the CNC into it because it's going across this way. And it... So short story <laughs> is I had to paint another one and uh, I just shipped it out to him today. So it's going to be shipped to his house. He's going to engrave it, which reminds me I have to send him the new font in the file and then uh, he'll ship it back. So I sent an email to the police chief secretary just stating, you know, this is the point where we're at with the flag. I sent her pictures of all the wood cut and all. So it looks like I'm doing shit. And I said, you know, I went up to Wisconsin and the piece got screwed up. So now I have to mail a piece up there. So she knows that it's, it's, um, it's, it should be done soon. It's in, so it's in process. It's, it's just in process. a little extended. And then last night I'm like, great. All I got left to do is engrave that patch and the badge they wanted engraved. And what so last go wrong, <laughs> absolutely nothing. Of course. <laughs> Last week, I took a piece of half-inch MDF. I primed it with um, Zinsser, Zinsser primer, oil-based primer for MDF. I painted it with the same paint, which is not oil-based, not a spray can. I rolled it on. Um, and then I'm like, I got everything set. I put the aura mask on it, and I stick it in the machine, and I bring up the file, and I start gra engraving. It's going great. Mm, it's doing a great job. And I walk away because there's nothing you can really do if something goes yeah. wrong. And then I see it fucking driving through the star and the stars bouncing up. I'm like, what the fuck? And I run over there and I have to stop no. it. It broke off part of the star. And Oy. then the problem was 
the original file I designed was four three quarter inch poplar. That's what I had made the first one out of. And I changed it to half inch MDF. So the machine was still going down for three quarters of an inch. It cut across my wasteboard, which is okay, but then cut into my T tracks on the, on the CNC, which now have to be filed so I can actually slide bolts in them because it, you know, how aluminum is pliable. So luckily I didn't break the $50 bit I had that I was using. I was going to say, is the bit okay? The bit's okay. Uh, my mind's not. I, I now, <laughs> you know, here we go again. Got to redo the fucking patch for the fourth time because this will be the fourth engraving of the, of, oh, I'm sorry, of the badge. I haven't even done the patch yet because that's like a three-hour engraving in its own. Yeah. So I just made sure last night to re make sure everything was set for half-inch MDF, resend um, the files to the to the computer, and then I'm just going to leave it. I was going to do it tonight, but I'll just be doing podcast stuff tonight. I'm going to take the night off of woodworking. So basically um, the flag. Oh, and I'm working on the flag that's behind me if you're watching YouTube. It's a retirement flag for a friend that works at the uh, electric company and had an issue with that, of course. I was engraving all the transformers and stuff on there, and I was using a 16th-inch bit. That's pretty small, but apparently some of the details in the engraving is too close, so it, it chopped out a bunch of detail work. Yeah, and it also just kind of start to weld together. Yeah, and it breaks off small fins and stuff that are on yeah. the transformer, and then, of course, it totally ruined the um, aura mask. So now I can't even paint it. It's just going to be like that. Just a shadow. I think, that, I think it looks cool. I think it looks cool. I don't want all of them to look the same. But yeah. the other thing was his, his name that you can see. I used the <laughs> Like the font randomly f- changed on you. The font randomly changed. It made his first name like bold and it's yelling at you. And then his last name is not bold. And I, I double and triple checked. I didn't do anything different to the font. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. I, and then I it will made say the th- stars different size. Yeah, well, I will say this with with the font, at least. At least it was after, it was in between the names, and it didn't occur on that second line. Right. All that line is still the same, and at least now you have some sort of differentiation between his first and his last right. name. Right. Yeah, it looks like you're yelling Grady, and then his last name is yeah. Duckworth, and then below it, it says Duckworth. safety, service, and commitment in white, and I'm really digging that. Yeah. But the stars, because the wood is warped, you know, the top left corner star is perfect. By the time you get to the bottom right, it's fat. Yeah, but I mean, in, in all honesty, this is what me, a wood flag is. Yeah, you and me are going to be like some of the only people that notice that. But when you give it to the guy, he's going to look at it, and he's right. a either not going to notice or b yeah. not going to give a shit. And I still have to put a black frame around it, so I have to cut um, poplar for that, paint it black, and then frame yeah. out the flag. And that'll so. that'll draw his eye away from. Any yeah. imperfections. So those are the two main projects that I have going on because um, I we told people, I, don't, I think you did too, there's a date for a deadline for orders. Yeah. Now is not a time. Own... Right. Now I wasn't taking any more orders for Christmas. So what happens? I'm out to breakfast with my best friend, Bill, the other day. Hey, uh, hey you know that cowboy flag I wanted you to make me for my buddy? Yeah. Can you have it ready yeah. by Christmas? <laughs> I said, Bill, you're killing me. <laughs> first, a, then, first, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I, I guess um, he's my best friend. So I'm like, yeah, I still it's, got one, a of the, it's weeks. one of the things like you're, you'll break your back to, to try to do it for him. But at the same time, you're like, God dang it, man. Right. So and I, what, I had a guy from work see the, um, the flag I did for my buddy Santana, where, which I just posted on my Instagram page with the um, three different patches from his departments and the badge numbers. So one of my buddies at work who actually just went on disability, he's done being a police officer, my buddy Tom, got injured pulling a woman out of a fire. He wants a flag with, it's funny, they, hey, can you do me a flag like that one, but I want it done like this. He wants black and gray stripes with gray stars, and then he wants four patches and badge <laughs> numbers on it. And then I give him the price, and he goes, what's my retirement price? And I'm like, you want all this and a fucking discount? You should have charged so I gave double. Him, I gave him a discount, but still, I'm like, don't tell anybody, one. Not that anybody's well, going to hear. That's just cops in general, man. Yeah. So I got we, that one. Or I told him, though, it's going to be like four to six weeks. He's like, no, no, it's no rush. And then I worked a security gig in the summer, and it was an overnight at a coin show. And I met, and I know I've talked about it on the show, I met two guys that were New York state yeah. corrections officers. So one of them 
he teaches uh, Hollywood actors, if you will, not Alec Baldwin, but he teaches Hollywood actors how to handle weapons, and he puts them through an ex uh, an extensive training program uh, with his company. That's what they do, and it's very cool. So he reached out. He's the other guy that's also Batman, so we're like Batman brothers because they call him Batman at work, you know? So he reached out to me uh, like two days ago and said, hey, Mike, um, I want to get something for my wife for Christmas. I'm like, God damn it. Another cool. Christmas. I'm not taking Christmas <laughs> orders yet. I'm taking Christmas orders apparently. So uh, he wants the um, New Orleans Saints. She's a Saints fan. She's from Louisiana. Okay, so, so he wants like the Fleur de Lis. He had seen the New Orleans Saints thing I did for Perry Woodworking, which is the state of Louisiana. Okay. It's got the Saint logo in one side of it that stands out, and it's got who dat on it in gold. So it's black state, gold lettering in the gold, the gold floor de lis. Yeah, but he wa also wants his wife's name on it. So um, he said wood, not MDF. That's MDF. I have uh, so we're gonna, we're going back and forth with that. But he wants that for Christmas. So I got two Christmas orders when I wasn't taking any, which is good, you know, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> And so I got to make yes. a cowboy flag, not for me. And I'm a cowboy fan. So that's a gift from, for Bill, for his friend and this new Orleans thing. So I got if that. If you want, I'll package up like a cup of urine and you can just pour it on it. Don't be hating. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk crap now. Cause the, just the way the 49ers are playing, they're going to get their asses kicked when they play each other. <laughs> I hope, but it'll probably happen. We're not betting again on it. No, God, that's no. for sure. Well, what's the chance for me to get something back, though? Maybe we should nope. bet on it. Nope. Because the Bears <laughs> fucked me. I'm a, I'm a smart gambler. <laughs> how do you, since I'm done, like, talking about my wood stuff, mm. how did you like those Portillo's beefs I sent you? Oh, my God, man. I, it makes me want to fly out to the Chicago area and try it, like, hot and fresh the way that, like, oh straight from God, them. Because if it travels that well, holy crap, man. Yeah, what were the directions? Because I've never ordered it frozen, so... First of all, let me say I just wanted to send you one fucking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I know I opened like, the box. I'm like, holy shit! I can't get less than eight fucking sandwiches for this guy. What the fuck? Wait, I mean, it makes sense from their point of view. Like, I'm not gonna ship one fucking sandwich. Right, right, yeah. But no, they send they send you like two containers of of the gravy. They tell you to warm <sighs> that up to to a specific temperature. Okay. Um, it's a science. And then they tell you like, hey, let them let the beef thaw all the way, and then. Peel, like give it a little just give it a little squeeze and then peel off in each individual thing and then dump that in the gravy for, for like X three minutes time yeah i don't remember but it was it was not long oh. and then freaking heat up the peppers and did you put the jardinier on there uh that's the hot pepper um hot pepper comment. no i don't I didn't do hot peppers. I went the sweet peppers. Because they sent you Jardiner, right? Yeah, they, they Jard sent they sent yeah they sent the hot peppers and the sweet peppers. So okay, the my hot peppers are did, called Jardiner. Okay, wow. Well, it said hot peppers on the jar. So yeah, well, there's all there's like <laughs> carrots in there, broccoli. Yeah, it's a, it's a mixture in olive oil. Um, yeah, with the hot my wife peppers. Had, That's my called wife had Jardiner. That and, yeah, Annie had she that. And she yeah, she loved it. So it was great. All right, good. Uh, all the kids ate the crap out of it. So I got the text from you. This guy, this is fucking great. I'm like, first of all, I told Brandon, he says to me, um, oh my God, I just finished eating the sandwiches. I, I'm, I need a nap or something like that. Oh yeah. No, cause I, I had one and then I was like, damn, that was good. I'm gonna have another one. <laughs> and I ate the second one. I was like, I need to lie down. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you ate two of those. I, yeah. I, at first I thought, <laughs> Hey, there's eight sandwiches there. He can feed his shift. And you're I like, no. Fed my patrol team. I'm eating no. all of it by myself. I'm eating all of it. So. I'm bathing in the gravy. Yeah, so I'm glad that you enjoyed that. Um, yeah. No, if I had made that all for the shift, there was no way that it would have been good by the time they got a chance to eat it. You have to cook it at work. Do you have a kitchen? Yeah, but we're... Uh, okay, so here's the thing. We show up into the main building, and we are in there for like maybe an hour yeah. And then we leave and then we don't all come right. back until it's time to go home. Why? You all supposed to come in and eat together. Fucking kind of camaraderie you got going on out there. We eat in the field. We use the hood of our car. Because we work in a big city. You for us, it's like a 15, the... it's a 15 minute drive to go back there. It's worth it for those beasts. And when the shooting happens, 
Yeah, you got to get. Then it takes us feet. extra longer to get back there, and then people go, right. "Why the hell did it take you that long well, to respond?" Your shift to the... missed out. So. Yeah, they did. They did. No, I got. And I'm, if they're listening, I'm, it wasn't my fault. I bought enough for you to feed your shift. <laughs> no, they're gonna end up with like tumblers when I leave okay. them here in two weeks. Not as good as the beefs, but whatever. Yeah. So uh, I am back in the shop. Uh, Woo! Yeah. So I mean, I I never really left it, but it was really hard to get stuff done. <laughs> With, so it was kind with, of depressing. Yeah. Seven <clears throat> fingers and two thumbs. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, like you have some issues with the, with the CNC here and there. I get issues every now and then with my tumblers. Where, but mine's user error. Yeah. Well, so is mine. Okay. It, it's not like, it's not like the machine screwed it up. Right. It's me. So I, I finally developed this pol or not policy, this procedure. Like I'm going to put blue painters tape over each cup and I'm going to run the laser at like 25% power, look through the green glasses, and make sure that the image is mirrored correctly. So, do that. Check it out. Cool. It's looking good. Rip off the tape, put it back on there. Boom. Fire it up and go. I forgot a very key <laughs> thing. Yeah? Turning the power back up. Oh, no. To 92% instead of 25 so I have a tumble. It's be a little bit of a, a difference with a, a logo that looks like it's just kind of ghosted onto there. Which I mean, in all honesty, it looks pretty cool, like the ghosted not... squad cars that you can't see unless light hits it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's as cool awesome. as it looks, it's not what I was going for. Like, I'm going to ship that one off to the customer anyways. It's like a hey, it look what, no, nothing here's what wrong you... with it. No, no, you go. Here. This is an option for you in the future if you like this ghost look. <laughs> I thought I'd throw one in. That's how you yeah. do it. You yeah, this is a prototype for our exactly new right. ghosted look. So. I give you an extra one as a prototype to give you an idea yeah. of what it looks like if you ghost one. Yeah, so it's it, it's for the same uh, Brewer's Bandana uh, company. Oh, the dog that, company. A, yeah, that our, a friend of our a friend of ours owns, and you know she's great. She we've done some T-shirts for her and stuff, and then that. So and then uh, this weekend on Saturday, I got to go rent a truck because I don't have a truck, and because of my <laughs> impending dog surgery probably not going to get a truck oh, anytime soon yeah so i gotta so rent have to one. finance the dog surgery yeah that's gonna be fun um good thing i'm good thing i'm coming to fto <laughs> i have all the overtime in the world excellent uh so saturday we got to rent a truck and then we got to get uh plywood because we are going to finally get that freaking bookcase done for our neighbors because i feel terrible that it has taken this long yeah um they're totally understanding because i agreed to do it and then like the next day i broke my finger right so we're gonna get the plywood for that and for the doors to the um the pantry get that all buttoned up i have a charging station that i still have to make that shouldn't take too long like i was kind of going through a cut list and everything I'm like this sh should be fairly quick so naturally it's gonna take forever yeah. something will go horribly wrong um and then yeah, it, it's uh, we. I, I ran a uh, the longest engraving I've ever run on my laser before. So I did a um, couple weeks ago. I designed a one of these Christmas boards, like Christmas trays that you can put like cookies for Santa, and it's got a little designated spot for the glass of milk and all that stuff. And it was really fun because my kids helped me design it. Like, really, okay, so that's we put this that's here and that cool. there. Yeah, and that was super fun. And then uh, I put it on the laser, and it was a three and a half hour engraving. So do you feel comfortable it, walking away? I don't oh, like, like I'll go inside, but I'll check it like every 20 minutes. Cause I've seen horror stories of right. stuff catching on fire. Yeah. So like I'm like in and out or if I like today I had to go run an errand. So I told my wife, like go check that like every five minutes <laughs> or 10 minutes or just please don't let it go <laughs> un right. unchecked. Um, but that was cool to be able to take it off and then show them like, Hey, you guys designed this and, that's they very were cool. really they're really stoked about it. So that's going to be up in the Etsy shop. And speaking of Etsy, I got yes. my first Etsy order. You did not. It wasn't I me. God no. damn it! I wanted to be the first guy. Well, you. It's been up for like a friggin' month. <laughs> I just didn't want to pay the tax. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, damn it! No, it's for coasters. So. Oh, cool. So those will get made. Um, and then when I looked at the shipping address, I saw it was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I sent her a text. I go, really? I go, you could have just sent me a text and like not paid the sales tax. 
Oh, that's funny. But yeah, you got so bless I sent your her mom a, being the first one to buy yeah, from your Etsy. Yeah, no, my my mom's awesome. She's been super supportive of all this stuff. Um, and I told her, look, I know it says shipped. I'm gonna bring it on Thanksgiving. Yeah, right. <laughs> you have to market it. So, ship. yeah. So, I, I, I'm kind of uh, like trying to figure out all that stuff, uh, like that end of Etsy. Yeah. So, you know what? It, we it, were it was just market a ship, but I know that there's the like you can use like Etsy for stuff, but I, I'd rather just use Pirate Ship. Well, it, actually, if you ship through Etsy, you get those same rates um, as no, those well, other I mean, if it's, companies. So, okay. What? I my I, I hired a web designer. Yeah, that's my, what you're saying. My website is now under construction. Is it okay. live? No, not is yet. It it's yet? close. No? You can look. Okay. I can look at it. But go ahead. Tell me your other thing, and I'll tell you. I so, want to give her a shout out. Okay. So this and this also ties into my uh, maker of the week. Oh yeah. So, oh that's um, right. That's the biggest news of the <laughs> for me. Yeah. So what started as i mean you've mentioned before that your daughter's like working on graphic design she did your logo and it looks absolutely phenomenal yeah so you. and you said that she had like the cricket easy press and all that stuff and mm -hmm. i've been bringing it up to my wife like hey we should do like a t-shirt for full house like that'd be cool and she's she's insanely busy with other stuff so i i get it that she didn't have time so i was like well you know screw it i'll you know hit up mike's daughter throw a little cash her way help her get get that stuff going, maybe give her the, the itch to make things and, and sell them and, and get money for it. And I told her an email, I go, Hey, if your creative juices get flowing and you come up with like an alternate logo for, for full house, I'd love to see your work. And then she sent me like 12 to 13 options. <laughs> yeah, she did. I go, holy crap. Okay. So I started looking at them. I'm like, okay, well, here's. And then there were like three of them that really stuck out that between me and Annie. We were like, these are dope. And she continued to develop. I mean, just a joy to work with back and forth, just exchanging ideas. And now that like color's been added to them, I was thinking maybe I'd get an alternate logo or something like that. I think I might have a new main logo That's because awesome, some of them are like my favorite one is the one that has the, the blue line through full through house and full house woodworking. I thought that one was dope. And then I saw one with red, white, and blue that kind of the O has the star in it and red and blue, which has like kind of an homage to an old air force logo and also reminded me of the captain America shield. So I like, I'm over the moon with it. That's so awesome. Morgan is also my maker of the week. Go check. She just started her Instagram page for her artwork and stuff. It's Mind Expense Expanse Art. All one like, word. All you Morazos in your damn tongue twister name. Yeah. <laughs> and she has an Etsy page now with that. Uh, she does. She has an Etsy page. Mind Expanse Art. Yeah, where she sells her artwork, which is awesome. Thank you very so. much for giving her a shout out because uh, it's you did that, and then Ted from. Ted's Zen Wood reached out to her because he was thinking about a graphic design after hearing, knowing my logo, hearing your, about your logo. She worked with him. His is done. She sent him a T-shirt. She did a T-shirt for him as a surprise and sent it to him. Uh, he's over the moon about it. And then another person reached out to me for his company. She's working with him now to do his company logo. She's now starting to, to, to do the work. Yeah, and she, you know, her, her page is just starting out, so it, it – there's not much on it, if, but she's going to start with your guys' permission once she does your logos. She wants to actually show that the logos that she's doing and oh, then yeah, with her absolutely. artwork, you know. So I said, hey, I don't even have a T-shirt yet. And so she's <laughs> she's doing my T-shirt this weekend, and then I'll I'll show it because I, I've found a, uh, a good T-shirt place where I can get pretty good prices for T-shirts. So she's going to do my T-shirt, and then like I told you uh, earlier today, I went to her tonight and i said hey i'm using just the mw on my phone as my screensaver yeah. and i told her i want this logo without the saw blade just the m and the w red white and blue camouflage red blue orange i want all the colors so i can black and orange so i can use it for different holiday seasons and yeah. change have alternate logos for different things and she's like okay i'll do it this weekend yeah but, and uh, that gave me the idea of when I reach out to her to see if she wants a check or Venmo or PayPal, 
<laughs> you're like, hey, uh, can you make one with a pink vine for breast cancer awareness? Because I have yeah, very family cool. members that are, you know, breast cancer survivors. Right. And I think it'd be cool to be able to probably next October, which I need to set a reminder on my phone, I've tried to do some sort of um, yeah, pink kind of fundraiser house. where I'll, I'll make like a, a pink line flag or yeah sell some merch like I did my first year when I first started doing merch I did uh the pink patch right on the hat and yeah, we I sold do those that stuff too. and the uh all the proceeds from that we we donated to uh breast cancer yeah, that's uh, awesome. research and early detection so like we have obviously stuff friends like and family members that are breast cancer survivors too so I'll have yeah. to add the pink to mind yeah I want that's a great idea so yeah, so that so Morgan is my Yay. maker of the week She's big well, time now. Thank you very much for doing that for my <laughs> daughter. Um, stuff's picking up for her. She really enjoys doing the work, and she's putting in tons of hours, by the way. She's hand sketching shit, and then she's transferring it into the computer, and I, she's working well, we very hard. We were emailing back and forth, and she's like, yeah, she's like, I'm sorry it took me so long. Like, it took her an extra hour to get back to me. She's like, I'm at a wedding in Boston. I'm like, enjoy your friggin' <laughs> yeah, trip. Yeah, she's in Boston. <laughs> like, you're allowed to take time off. Good Lord. It's, there's no rush. The whole family was there except for Mike. <laughs> I didn't get to go. Because my uncle was here. Um, so I'm going to give a shout out to the woman who's designing my website. Her name is Renee Ellis. She's a graphic designer. You can find her on Etsy at Renee Designs. It's R-E-N-E-H Designs. Ren A. A. Canadian A. Um, R-E-N-E-H Designs. She's doing my website. Uh, I gave her an idea of what I wanted. We've been going back and forth for now two weeks. And I just went on there today, Marazzo, woodworking.com. It's not up, it's not live yet, but she put all my flags uh, in, like, there's Old Glory, there's Blue Line, there's Retirement, there's State and County, Country, there's all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to have a spot for bottle openers, we're going to have a spot for um, cutting boards and charcuterie boards and everything else I'll be able to add, you know, in the future. But I have to, I have to do a bio for her, you know, our story or the company story. Yeah. There's a few things that she gave me a checklist to do that I have to start doing this week, but I'm getting excited. I went to the page today on my Squarespace. It's going to be a Squarespace site. And just to see what it looks like so far, I'm going to change the flag that she's using as the backdrop to like one of the retirement flags, but um, it looks cool, man. I'm excited to have a website. There'll be a website up. It's an e-commerce website. So I'll be able to, you'll be able to buy right from my website. Uh, you'll be able to also buy, um, what do you call those cards that you buy people? Gift cards? I'm so tired. Huh? Gift cards. Thank gift you. Card. You'll be able to buy gift cards. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to start sending out emails and, you know, through the website. And so that part's growing. And hopefully, within a year, I got a good following on the website and I get some more hits than I get on Etsy. And I also linked my Etsy page to the website and she asked me about it. And I'm like, take it off. Because if you're going to the website, you don't need to have a link to Etsy. Yeah. Be and so I do want to go back on the Etsy. Like I had someone else today just just favor right now um, one of the soccer Puma soccer uh, bottle openers I did. Now, I still haven't set up the whole, hey, when they favor something, give them 10% off because I'm an idiot. Yeah. So I'm probably going to lose well, a couple of sales that way. Well, but. I think you can send them like a targeted thing too of like, hey, send like this person, like send them 10% off or something like that. I got to look into doing that. Yeah. It, it's a lot easier than you think. I didn't want to do it near Christmas because I'm already swamped. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to add into it. Which is weird because, like, I, I, we went to this holiday schedule thing that, you know, we're going to be swamped. And I know you have a lot going on. And it sounds like I have a lot going on. But I don't have a ton of, like, Christmas orders. Like, most of my stuff, people have told me, like, hey, it's no rush, man. So. I'm, I've gotten only the two Christmas orders, but I'm yeah. trying to finish up. I, I've got a, a You're trying solid to do oak baseball bat display case that yeah. my buddy ordered from me last spring. And That's like just my thing. I think for like flags, like I'm probably not going to do any flags like for Christmas just because like that takes time. Right. And I'm not going to get it done in time to get it shipped with the, all the shipping issues that are right already happening that are going to be made worse because yeah. it's the Christmas season. So like if it's like one off things of like tumblers or like hexagon shelves or cutting boards or stuff like that, like I can still probably get those done out for Christmas, but it's going to have to be small things. Yeah. Like there's going to have to be things where, you know, if you want this for Christmas, you should have ordered it. And then you want a bigger thing. You should have ordered this. Right. Like a month ago. Well, 
I want to redo my my business plan too um, for 2022. You know, having a CNC, I've said before, that should, thing should be running all the time, and it should. There's no excuse why I don't have the lumber and just stick something in there. And especially now, Super Bowl is going to be up in February. I should have the files. Once the playoffs start, I should buy all the files of the teams that are going to be in the Super Bowl. Once the Super Bowl is announced, I should make flags for the Super Bowl. I have to do that kind of stuff too, World Series, NBA champion. Just that kind of stuff, along with I've got signs I want to make and put on the website. You know, I've got movie memorabilia I want to do that is tied to movies like signs and stuff like that. I I need more time. I know yeah. I could well, blow I, this thing up if I had more time. Yeah, well, I think that's part of the thing is I think you got to do what you can now, and then I'd say the second you retire, like I would, if it were me, and I retired in May, like, day after retirement like i would do exactly what you're talking about like i would right now if i were you i would be building as far as like building those C those cut files right or or getting them off of etsy that's what i do is like if i don't have time to build it no myself, i buy my files from etsy it's a dollar 90 percent of the time yeah <laughs> and it's way more worth it than spending my own time designing yeah. shit because i i've done a couple of them where i designed it completely 100 percent myself and it took hours yeah it's not worth like, it i'll i'll pay the dollar <laughs> right those guys that's, that's like all, all they do yeah that's like all of the um all the images on my christmas board are all i paid a dollar for 100 christmas themed files right it doesn't and make any grab, sense for you drag, to design that shit yeah drag and drop and like right. i bought a monogram thing to put on cutting boards it's yeah for a dollar yeah it, I sent it makes too much sense eric from valhalla woodworks mm -hmm. who who i did that marine bottle opener for as, as a giveaway winner for my giveaway. He has, he just bought a C, uh, CNC, so he had reached out to me and asked um, where I get my files and stuff. And I told him, I said, I get them on Etsy, but I'll send you some. And I sent him, God knows, 100 files. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. he goes, well, you paid for them. I go, I don't give a shit. You can have yeah. them because I want to help you get started. So this is where I find them. But to start, here's a 48 flag star file. Here's a 50 flag star file. Here's I gave him all the car logos and superhero stuff. I just gave him, I sent him like six zipped folders of files that he can use for his yeah. CNC. That's, and I've sent guys um, like light burn files for their lasers, like guys that have gotten into Ortor after me. Cause That'll be me next because I mean, I'm going to get a laser. Yeah. That, dude, I cannot recommend the or, the Ortor yeah. enough, especially if I know they usually, or they were running a deal with the, um, the 2 Pro, where if you bought that thing, they would give you the rotary attachment the rotary oh. attachment is is great it's i mean i think it's like 50 60 bucks and it's already paid for itself yeah I'm, I, that's, like, I just need a spot to put it in here bill my yeah. buddy was in the it, shop today and he's like damn dude you're running out of room i'm like yeah, yeah i, I it really, really have doesn't to take have over. a big footprint at all yeah i could it's put like, it underneath this table and build a, yeah. a pull out like uh jonathan did under his uh, big assembly table he yeah. pulls it out and it's right there yeah i've seen a couple guys do that where it's just a it's on a a slide shelf right underneath like an assembly table or something. Yeah. I didn't know what the footprint was of it. Cause I wasn't familiar with it until I saw it in Jonathan's shop. Yeah. It's like two foot by two foot. Yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. It, I know and, there's and some like Laguna maybe, makes a big ass laser. Yeah. Those are the big like CO2 lasers that you have to replace stuff in all, all the time. Yeah. But they're more powerful. They can cut more stuff. The order is like a, a diode, like hobbyist laser. And which is so, fine because if I'm doing glasses and tumblers and stuff like that, yeah. it just adds that level to my shop and my website yeah. that I can do that. That's stuff, one so. other thing that I, I learned to do today was how to etch glass nice. with my laser. Yeah, so. that's cool. I'm going to order some uh, some whiskey glasses from you with my logo. Oh, yeah. I wanted to get a tumbler from you, but I've got like three tumblers and I rarely use them. One's the Midnight Handyman, two are the Midnight Maker. <laughs> we, so We're going to need a matching set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I'm just gonna buy a damn laser, and but I'll get the whiskey glasses from you. Oh yeah, I'll get I'll get those done. I'll send you my digital files, the logo, and I want to make. Um, there's one other project I have to do for my boss, my buddy Jimmy, who got promoted, who I did the flag for and set it up in his office last week. Uh, he wants me to do a frame for his Taekwondo certificate, which I he gave me last year, and I was waiting for a good. My, my miter saw is not square, so for me, cutting 45s is really hard. I want to get a yeah. miter gauge for the table saw. I was going to build a sled, and I'm like, I'm just going to buy that Harvey 
miter gauge. Oh, yeah. Then I can do frames a lot easier. So I'm waiting to do that so I can get that that thing done. And then I, I got so much shit, dude. I don't know. Yeah. We should wrap up, but I've got so many projects I want to do, and I need just a few more tools. Yeah. And I think that's going to be one of the things I upgrade next is going to be my, my miter saw because I still have my Harbor Freight one. It still yeah. cuts fine, but, but it is a nightmare thing, to keep square. This one doesn't stay square, and I'm at the point where on this big union that I just did for this big flag, I cut it out on the CNC because I know the CNC is square, and I had to cut it out. Yeah. So now it's square. But that's just for rough cutting now. I'm going to rough cut yeah. my large stock. That's all I'm going to use it for. I'll get the Harvey. If I need precision cutting, table saw precision cutting yeah. with a that, slider. That's, and that's slide. more so what I've started doing is I use my delta, my table saw. Yeah. So, all right. Do you got anything else? It's almost a four-hour show. Yeah, we should probably wrap this up. I have to be up in a few hours to go to the dentist, which oh, is God. my favorite thing in the world to do. Better you than me. That's what they say. I fucking hate the dentist. Oh, my neck hurts. <laughs> What are you getting done at the dentist real quick? Let me know. Uh, so because of COVID and we moved, dentists around here weren't taking new patients. So I have to go in and oh. get a get a deep cleaning and then a, uh, I think a filling. Okay. So I'm going to be grouchy tomorrow. Well, the cleaning's good. That'll make you feel better. Well, no, not a deep cleaning where they like, they got to get in there. <laughs> get in there, doc. They get, get to work. So I tell her, I, like, just I might have a out, chunk man. of steak stuck like, in there somewhere. Yeah. It's like, I'm just going <laughs> to just have coffee breath when I walk in there. Like, go for it. Nice. Ugh. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks, Brandon, for uh, writing this episode. This is going to be titled Brandon's episode. Brandon, oh, I thought we were called like Dirty 30. Oh, we could do Dirty 30. <laughs> dirty 30, 30, Brandon's up, or Brandon's episode, Brandon's Dirty 30. Dirty 30. There we yeah, go. we'll do that. Brandon's Dirty 30. <laughs> Uh, remember, new episodes of the Handcuffs and Sawdust podcast are released every Wednesday, normally on a regular schedule, but we are in winter mode. So we're going to end the year. We've got this one, three more for the rest of the year. We're going to do two in December. Uh, so we got this one to end November, then two in December. So And stick uh, with us because we got some stuff planned. Got some for sponsors coming on that want to give away shit on our show, which is very exciting. We'll announce those sponsors during the first show of the new year, season two, which will be in January. So with that, um, if someone wants to send a question, Brandon. Well, they can send the old voice recording if they want, if they want their voice on the show. Like right. If you want to be famous, you can send that voice memo to handcuffs and sawdust podcast at gmail.com. Or if you, you know, a little shy, you just want to type it out. You can email it to that same email address, or you can DM Mike over at Morazzo Woodworking, or me over at Full House Woodworking. Where will they the not show. send an email? Uh, MM Midnight Maker, or the <laughs> Midnight Handyman, right, right. or some other fucking guy that you that's went by a, before. That's a shout out, Brandon, for or, emailing me shit to my old web. Okay, so we're okay. We're gonna do this then. <laughs> you got like seven different emails, dude. Yeah, I do. I get e I get emails from different email addresses from you. <laughs> so delete all the other shit. I'm working and on have it, but I, one, people and keep have sending one me shit. centralized email. I'm gonna be sending and you. And I stuff. will send it. Yeah. To that email, I'll be sending I you send stuff from I the handcuffs in. and sawdust podcast email. You know That's what, what I start to type in? I type in yeah. Morazzo, and you get six names and six and email I get, addresses. And the first one that pops up is MM Midnight Maker. Yeah. And I'm all about convenience, so I go boom that one. Right. It's funny because I've moved all the files from that email over to the Maraza Woodworking email now. Well, and I'm starting to unsubscribe from all the incoming stuff I get on that email. Delete and it. I have to, I'm trying. Delete it. I still get stuff that comes there for like payment I don't stuff. Care. Delete I gotta it. Gotta swap it over. Delete it. <laughs> <laughs> like right. the video. Subscribe on YouTube. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Tell your friends, coworkers, family members to watch the show on YouTube. You and get to seven listen. years. Good luck. Seven years, good luck. Is that what it is? Yeah. Eight now. Right. It's now I eight years, go good luck. I'm supposed to volume up and not down. So we're doing this backwards today. Here we go. And we're out. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Come back next week. Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Stay safe in the street and on the shop. Peace. Deuces.